What's the most inaccurate thing your child has ever been taught in school? My 10-year-old son came home confused because his history teacher told the class that the Great Wall of China is visible from space with the naked eye. My son Alex has always been fascinated by space. Since he was five, we've spent countless nights stargazing with our telescope. He knows all the planets and can recite facts about the International Space Station. Last year, I bought him a book signed by Chris Hadfield, the famous astronaut. Alex treasures it and can quote entire passages about what Earth actually looks like from space. But everything changed when Mr. Peterson started teaching history. During a lesson about ancient wonders, he told the class that the Great wall of China is the only man-made structure visible from space with the naked eye. Alex raised his hand and explained that astronauts have confirmed this isn't true. The wall is too narrow and blends with the landscape. He mentioned that Hadfield specifically addressed this myth in his book. Mr. Peterson cut him off. That's nonsense, he said. It's in our textbook, and I've been teaching this fact for 20 years. Your little astronaut book is wrong. The next day, Alex brought in his signed book to show the passage. Instead of listening, Mr. Peterson confiscated it, calling it disruptive material. He made Alex stand in front of the class and recite, the Great Wall of China is visible from space 10 times. When Alex came home, he was devastated. His precious signed book was gone, and he felt humiliated. Mr. Peterson had assigned a five-page essay on the importance of respecting teachers' knowledge as punishment. I was furious. I emailed Mr. Peterson explaining the facts and asking for the book back. His response, I don't need space facts from a parent. The curriculum says the wall is visible from space, so that's what I teach. The principal seemed reluctant to contradict a tenured teacher over what she called a minor factual dispute. That's when I decided to take action. My college roommate now works for NASA's education program. When I explained the situation, she was appalled at the misinformation information being taught. Three days later, I walked into Alex's classroom during history period. Mr. Peterson looked annoyed until I introduced my guest, Dr. Sarah Chen, NASA education specialist. Dr. Chen asked if she could address the class about space observations. Mr. Peterson couldn't refuse a NASA scientist in front of students. His face fell when she pulled up actual astronaut photographs and video testimonials. Contrary to popular belief, Dr. Chen explained, the Great Wall is actually very difficult to see even from low Earth orbit. Astronauts need zoom lenses to spot it. She showed what's actually visible, cities at night, major dams, and agricultural features, but no wall. One girl raised her hand and said, but Mr. Peterson told us it's in our textbook. Dr. Chen gently explained how textbooks can contain outdated information and showed the publication date, 1985. Mr. Peterson kept getting redder as Dr. Chen displayed quotes from multiple astronauts, all confirming the wall isn't visible to the naked eye from space. The principal walked in during the presentation. When Dr. Chen mentioned the confiscated book, the principal looked sharply at Mr. Peterson, who reluctantly pulled it from his desk drawer. Alex's face lit up when Dr. Chen not only returned his book, but added her own signature next to Hadfield's. Then she surprised everyone by connecting to a live video call with an astronaut on the ISS, who confirmed everything. The next week, the school announced a curriculum review. Mr. Peterson was required to attend a workshop on incorporating current scientific knowledge into history lessons. Alex's class was invited to participate in a special NASA virtual field trip. The school newspaper ran a front-page story about how one student's knowledge had helped update the entire curriculum. And that signed book? It now sits in a display case in the school library, with a note explaining how important it is to always keep learning, even for teachers.